Hi everyone, Max and here, welcome to a new Survivor Mars Let's Play. If you're not familiar with Survivor Mars, it's basically a city builder type strategy game that just happens to be set on Mars. I would describe it as SimCity-esque meets Elon Musk almost. So basically the game has recently come out, it was made by Hammond Games and published by Paradox Interactive who were kind enough to provide me with a Steam key. And I did actually do a prior Let's Play just showing off the basic early stuff with the game. But I've been playing a lot of it recently and uh, yeah I decided to do another Let's Play but this one is actually going to be played on literally the hardest possible difficulty setting that you can with the game currently which happens to be a difficulty bonus of 535%. So difficulty bonus within the game is kind of a mixture between how hard the game is and also a way of uh, keeping score of other game's milestones. Uh, the higher the setting, the more the score you'll get with the milestones within the game. The actual difficulty bonus is made up of four different components. Uh, the map, uh, the colony site you choose, uh, also it is the commander you select, the sponsor you select and also the mystery that you select as well. So I should actually uh, show off some of the host settings then that I've picked to uh, get this bonus. You can see the colony site that I've chosen as well. This is literally the hardest uh, map site and I'll be talking more about this shortly. But let's get to the other settings. So these are the game settings prior to selection. So first of all, let's take a look at the mission sponsor. We can actually see here the easiest sponsor to play with. Very easy in fact, the International Mars mission. So what makes this so easy is the fact that you get a huge amount of funding, 30 billion. Ton of extra research, rear metal price is excellent, you've got a ton of people willing to be starting applicants, willing to colonize Mars, a ton of starting rockets and a variety of other bonuses as well. The sponsor I'm going to be playing with though is Paradox Interactive. Now you may not be aware of this sponsor because this sponsor is only unlocked if you happen to sign up to the Paradox newsletter. So they're literally the hardest uh, possible sponsors. Uh, other than that, it would be Russia if you haven't uh, signed up to the newsletter. But uh, yeah, I'm going to be playing with Paradox Interactive. What makes them so hard is, uh, well, most of their settings, frankly. Uh, they only start with one rocket, which is a huge drawback. They have very little funding, only 4 billion, which I think is the joint worst in the game uh, with this sponsor here. Uh, the research is very, very low as well. Actually, they have lower research. Uh, the rear metals price is actually pretty good though, 24 uh, million per metal. Uh, starter applicants is very low as well, they only have 75 uh, people who are willing to colonize Mars. They do have a few other nice bonuses though. Uh, you discover more uh, breakthrough anomalies. Breakthrough anomalies are very very powerful so that's very good. And they also get extra applicants when you research a breakthrough tech. So there are some nice bonuses to this. Uh, sponsor even though it is definitely the hardest sponsor in my opinion. Uh, the rockets actually require more fuel to launch which is a drawback so that's another bad thing about them. But that's the sponsor I'm going to be playing as. So you can see here the difficulty bonus is already ramped up from 20 to 220 percent. The next thing which uh, affects the difficulty bonus is the commander profile. So there's a variety of commanders here which all do various different things in one way or another and you can see the difficulty bonus changing at the top there and you may have noticed the hardest uh, difficulty bonus commander profile was Futurist. To be honest I don't necessarily think this is the worst of the commanders. Uh, you get extra uh, breakthrough tech research 30% uh, faster and also they get a bonus tech autonomous sensor, uh, sensors uh, which is actually pretty good I definitely don't think this is the worst of the commanders but yeah gonna be playing with the highest difficulty bonus so I'm gonna be selecting futurist uh, I would probably say with the sponsor the uh, rocket scientist is very good the extra rocket is huge with them when they only start with one rocket but uh, yeah not gonna be picking this the bonus tech is actually pretty damn good as well. The uh, jet propulsion, I'd definitely be wanting to get that pretty soon into the game. But Futurist it is. The colony logo, since I'm uh, going to be playing as Paradox, I might as well pick the Paradox logo, I think. But there's a variety. 
that you can happen to choose from here. And the last thing which affects difficulty here is the mystery. So this is kind of the story element to the game, or a type of quest. Uh, doesn't really give you much information here whatsoever. There's uh, some really nice quotes from various things, so you can probably get an idea about what happens with some of these. The actual uh, mystery I'm going to be playing is Marsgate, though. This gives the highest difficulty bonus. So at the low end, it's uh, up to about 60% more the difficulty bonus, I think, from none to uh, Marsgate. So yeah, that's the one I'm selecting. Hardest one. So that completes the actual uh, first three difficulty settings, and I can move on to next. So the payloads, what you actually take to Mars, is very, very important. I'm not actually going to be using the default settings here. I'm going to make some changes. So let's first have a look at the prefab buildings. I don't plan on taking a moisture evaporator. This is a way to get water from the atmosphere. I actually plan on finding a uh, water resource on Mars. So let's deselect that. I'm going to take a fuel refinery. If you've listened to any of Elon Musk's talks, uh, this is going to be crucial in setting up a Mars colony. That's uh, one of the key first things he intends to do, get fuel being made on Mars to allow the rockets to actually uh, return to Earth. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing exactly the same in this game. I'm going to be adding a uh, drone hub. And uh, what this does is control drones. Drones are the uh, robots which create your early infrastructure. Uh, or all your, uh, all your infrastructure on Mars, actually. Uh, so yeah, very important. I'm going to be needing one of those coming up pretty soon. I'm going to actually take off the drones though here. Uh, definitely very useful, but we only have so much cargo space. I'm also going to take off the auto probes. I won't have the tech uh, to be able to use those uh, on uh, basically landing on Mars quite yet anyway. So let's take those off. Uh, take off some machine parts. These three resources are very, very important. All the resources are, but uh, these three can't be easily made on Mars. Uh, you have to get certain buildings up and in fact domes actually you need people on Mars and people don't initially colonize Mars you just start with your drones to uh, start out. Uh, other than that I'm going to be adding a transport vehicle so I'm going to have one of all of these different uh, Martian vehicles to start out and yeah this is the uh, payload I'm going to be using. There was actually a bug on the release version uh, where this was costing more than it should. It was 1.4 billion, but uh, I actually mentioned about it on their forums and they hot fixed it within a couple of days afterwards. So it's back to 400 million. If it had been 1.4 uh, billion, then uh, it would make this start even harder. This uh, explorer finds anomalies that carries drones and this moves around resources. So, yeah, that's the payload I'm going to be using. And we've already seen the map that I'm going to be, well, at least the colony site I'm going to pick. That happens to be 44 degrees north and 112 west. I think you can type it in as well down there. So it's northeast of uh, Olympus Mons, the uh, famous geographical feature on Mars, which is like a an active volcano and yeah there's a huge canyon down there, Valles Marineris. There's tons of other features of Mars of course. But uh, yeah this is the site we're going to be founding our colony on and you can see the more detail in here some of the stats. So it's very mountainous it means there's a lot less uh, places that you can actually uh, stick buildings on basically not so much flat terrain. Temperature has really negative consequences if you settle in a cold area your buildings cost more in energy to maintain and if they don't have energy they can actually freeze and uh, stop working entirely altitude uh, the higher it is can actually be beneficial actually because things like wind turbines actually will produce more uh, outputs in energy very low resources on this map site uh, all of those are pretty crucial and uh, yeah, there's uh, big threats here as well. So I'm going to have to deal with all sorts of uh, 
issues and uh, luckily I've played quite a bit of the game now so I know how to deal with them but uh, they can catch you out uh, every now and then. Now I have actually played this map site before uh, once I played it with the press version and it's actually changed since then with the recent hot fix that I just mentioned. Uh, so basically the terrain is the same but the cold areas are different and also the strategic resources have changed uh, since then. But I have actually played again since then uh, on uh, this colony site so I do actually know where all of the strategic resources are on this map so that's going to be uh, helpful to me certainly uh, with playing on this difficulty bonus. I played up to about 110 uh, souls I think Martian orbits the game separates time into. But uh, yeah, that's going to be beneficial to me. Let's get started though. I do plan on doing things a bit different though. Uh, yeah, to what I have done. Um, playing the yeah first time round in this post hot fix. Welcome to Mars. So the game always seems to start you on this southern part of the map, but I actually don't intend to actually settle there, create my colony there. Uh, yeah, but I'll get to that shortly. Uh, this mentions Welcome to Mars, Commander. Mission Control Log uh, number one. Welcome to Mars. Everyone at Mission Control is impatient to see the rocket touching down and unloading its precious cargo. Our remotely controlled eyes and hands on the red planet, the drones and rovers. Our goal is to secure a foothold for humanity by building the first Martian dome. This daunting endeavor will allow the brave pioneers, the founders, to settle on Mars. Um, prove that the colony is sustainable but until then we have to make sure the colony has enough construction resources water oxygen and power our sponsor of course is paradox interactive and commander profile is futurist okay let's quickly press pause before it runs on so the game has scanned that area and basically wants me to settle somewhere on here but i'm actually not going to be settling there because uh, the first uh, time i played post hot fix on this uh, map uh, I settled here. And it's actually around here is probably the best site on a map to settle early on because within a um, very short distance there is concrete water and also rare metals which you really need for your initial starting colony. I'd say the second best place to settle uh, but the game never seems to start you there is around this area. There's water here and here. There's rare metals up there and there's a lot of concrete around here so I'm actually going to be settling, settling up here uh, landing my rocket shortly. Now I wouldn't recommend you to do this. The only reason I'm doing this is so it's a different for me. I don't want to be playing the same game twice in effect. Uh, if I set up here it'd be very different for me and I'll have different challenges. But uh, I think this around there is the best place to um, settle on this map. I really do wish the game would have random strategic resources on the map. Maybe even random terrain or random cold areas but it doesn't currently. Right, so the game is telling me I need to scan. Now, I'm probably going to set on my rocket there, but I'm actually going to scan there. Uh, there's metals mentioned. Yeah, that one has a higher chance for metals. I'm not sure there's actually metals there, even though it says it. I'm going to need metals early on uh, to build certain key buildings, which I'll talk more about shortly. So we scan there, and... Do I have to land the rocket straight away? Um, I'll just land the rocket straight away. So from memory there's concrete around there and concrete around there. So I'll land roughly there. Okay. So uh, research, let's move on to that. Uh, I should also mention a few other things as well. Uh, yeah, the map is split a bit to different areas especially on the harder difficulties on the easier difficulties the can be completely flat what the problem with it being split up into different areas is you can't easily travel from one area to another so I'm gonna have to build very expensive tunnels at some stage to get to different areas of the map this map is split into six areas so there's one down the side there one over there is that bit in the bottom south that bit in the north and this middle area is actually split up into two parts although it looks like it's only one there's um, impassable terrain here for rovers who can't travel there to there or drones can't travel across so this two separate areas uh, 
I should show you the milestones as well. So these are the key things that I'm intending to achieve during the course of the game and the sooner we do them the better the score we get. Now me settling over here is going to delay things uh, by at least a couple of days but a couple of days isn't a big deal frankly. A couple of souls. Right so uh, yeah that's about to land. Uh, let's select the research as well. So research is uh, very unique within Surviving Mars and probably one of the best features I'd say. So basically you've got five different fields and you research things along these uh, rows here. And this is uh, random every time. So say for example this tech here, Extract Amplification, sometimes this wouldn't be the first tech. It could be like the fifth tech along. Uh, same for the autonomous sensors, that could be first in some games. In this game I've actually got it for free because that's uh, down to my uh, commander trait. So this really does change up things and can have pretty significant uh, yeah, outcome on how things work out. Um, I'd say, yeah, I think how it works is like the first five are randomly placed within the first five, like that couldn't be at the end for example, it has to be within like the first five or so and then after that the next five are all random again, it could be anywhere within that. It's roughly like that, if not exact like that. So what I'm really hoping for here, uh, I'm hoping to get research techs early on and they're found within, the early research techs are found within robotics and social, but sadly, yeah. They haven't turned up here, so they could be anywhere within those four. Uh, this is going to make the game more difficult, frankly, because I haven't got them early on. I'm going to select that one first. That one's probably slightly more useful to me than that one is currently. But I'm going to be focusing on these. I can pick up uh, anomalies though later on to hopefully reveal more of the tech tree, and then I might switch my research if a research tech turns up. Breakthroughs is something I should mention. So these are unique techs that uh, don't actually turn up within every game. There are 55 of these and you're only going to get a certain amount based on finding anomalies for them. Uh, we do actually get a variety of uh, breakthrough bonuses down to our commander and also um, our sponsor. So yeah, the difference between a very hard game and a very a much easier game is really down to the breakthroughs and what random breakthroughs you happen to get within the game. Right, so I've got a tech selected and uh, yeah, let's close that and watch the rocket land. Uh, that's been yeah, surveyed. There's one of those anomalies that I mentioned down there, but I'm not going to be able to get that for a significant amount of time because I can't get up these uh, mountain sides basically. I have to make tunnels at some stage. Okay, so we've got the early rovers come out, and here you can see the tunnels that you can make. So you place two ends, but uh, they cost an absolute fortune, as you can see on the right-hand side, in machine parts, concrete, and metals. So I'm not going to be making those anytime soon. Right, uh, until I can actually find some metals, I'm not going to be able to do much. So I'm in a bit about to cut uh, some. Uh, of time out of the video. That's one of the reasons why I'm not streaming this because uh, yeah otherwise uh, I wouldn't be able to do well for a time period until it's scanned there's not going to be uh, much happening. What I want to do very soon though is start making these sensor towers. That will improve the scanning speed by a heck of a lot and also warn us about uh, disasters. But I need metals for that and uh, to get metals I have to scan that first because they don't appear on a map until uh, you've scanned it I believe. Okay sometime later I'm finally about to scan this area a couple of percentage points away. You can see an asteroid about to hit down there as well. Uh, one of those actually did hit over here and revealed an anomaly but I'm not going to be able to pick that up for a very long time. My Explorer rover certainly can't get over there. Uh, if I unpause though uh, we can see this about to complete and hopefully there are metals there that I can actually start making some found. sensor towers to scan. which will make scanning a heck of a lot quicker because that took a couple of days or so to actually 
uh, get to that point. So brilliant, that is yeah now scanned. And we've even found a new anomaly, so I want to definitely check that out. So if I click on here, we can see this in more detail. It was the beaker type anomaly. So this one generates research points and they contribute to any ongoing research. So I could get this tech or any of these techs a bit quicker if I want to do that. I think I'm not going to get it yet though. I actually want to wait until the research techs turn up and then I'll uh, actually pick that tech up to get it a bit sooner. Right, in the meantime though, there is some metals down here. Oh, and that's a uh, dust uh, storm which uh, could be a bit of an issue. Uh, I also, in that time out then, I created a depot, this uh, storage uh, place basically. I got the transport uh, rover to move the resources on from the rocket to there. Right, because this is going back to Earth at some point. In the meantime though, let's make another depot. I'll make a metal depot here. So this one just stores metals and that one's a universal one which is 30 of each type. So let's get uh, transport loaded. Actually I'm going to load uh, 5 electronics there. And the drones off the rover are going over to those metals and they're going to take that up there. You can see the area where it can work in. Hopefully that dust storm doesn't come over to these because that could damage uh, those. What I'm also going to do as well, which maybe I should have done earlier, is create uh, a large solar panel. You know what? I can wait. I guess I should make it. Um, I'm going to make this over here and I'm also going to make a power line from it so I can recharge those basically using that uh, coming up. Right, so that has five electronics. Let's load, oops, load that resource and let's start making these sensor towers. So first one I'm going to make is uh, over here. So let's place that there and yeah this is going to be very useful and with the futurist ability this won't require maintenance so I don't need power for it and I don't don't need to repair it at any point either. So I need to get those resources and this is why I've had to wait on scan. Uh, so let's grab some of those. Okay, let's keep out the way of that as well preferably. Right. So, okay, this isn't good. Let's move that over to there. Right. Uh, how many have we got? I'm going to make three of these in different locations. Right, this is actually in the way of where I want to go now, so I've got to be careful. Uh, let's get that up to there, and the rover over to there. over to here. Right, so that's waiting for the drones to get back in there. Okay. Where's that? Oh. Oh no, that was the right one. Uh, yeah, the rover's coming over to here and that's the explorer. I'm getting confused. Uh, okay, so those drones should make that now. They should, if I move that a little bit, go and uh, pick up a couple of resources off the back. And you can see they're going to make that. Okay, so now I can start. Well, actually, I probably should have picked a place to scan but uh, already. But let's pick there next. As you can see here, the sensor tower's boost is 400%. So from a previous 0%, that is uh, heck of good. So elsewhere, you get a 10% boost for each and every sensor tower uh, anywhere on the map. But nearer to that sensor tower, we'll get a big boost. So that's 284 there, 300 odd there. So I think I'll do there next. And let's get both of those making some more of these towers then. So I'm going to want, I think one there maybe. It's a decent idea. Uh, so, 
come down to there. Okay, so I've placed a sensor tower here and they're about to arrive. So that's basically in this middle-ish area. I've also uh, placed a sensor tower there. So yeah, this area might be a bit hard to scan because there's no tower near to it, but they should boost lens up quite a bit. I could make more. Uh, I could make up to five since I have five electronics uh, with me initially the initial payload but uh, three will do so right that's just waiting to come down here and unload the drones and yeah let's move uh, that which gets their attention and uh, let's make that okay so that's more scanning that's 20 percent in every area at least and uh, near to that it's gonna be much much higher okay so let's get these down to the last one. There was a hotfix release just before I started recording as well and it seems to be a bit of a graphical bug. There seems to be an outline around these cleans and in the research screen. Uh, yeah, so you're going to need to fix that. I don't think that was intentional. I imagine. Okay, so you can see the rovers just coming down here. Milestone Hello. achieved. On YouTube, Sector a scan. Zombie is good. Anomaly found. Uh, so milestone achieved. We've now found water on Mars. So that's the first milestone we got, and it's actually an anomaly there. So yeah, third milestone. We got a bit of a score for that. Sol four exactly isn't a great time, but I'm doing something unusual by not settling over here and settling over here, so things are delayed a tiny bit. Uh, that anomaly, this one is a special breakthrough anomaly. So let's find out what that is. And uh, yeah, I get the Explorer rover to go and grab that now while these rovers come down here. Okay, so the rovers have just about got here. Uh, right. Let's get their attention and make the last of the sense I'm going to make in this area of the map. Okay, right, next let's get both of these back up to here and then I'm going to start to make yeah, get that up and get the metals so there's 46 metals I can Breakthrough acquire here. discovered. Milestone achieved. And I've just acquired a breakthrough tech, so Martian Diet is the breakthrough, and that's also Milestone. So extra score for that. So if we have a look in here, this tech, which I could research now, but there's no point, because uh, what it does is uh, there's less food consumption for the colonists. So this is uh, one of these uh, unique techs that you can get, or sometimes you won't get within your games. Uh, that's not bad, but uh, it's useless since we don't have any colonists yet. I have to get domes up, and to get domes up I need water, oxygen, power, and lots of other things, lots of resources first. Uh, first cleanse first is exploration. we got to know the lay of the land, and uh, then I'll be getting the fuel refinery up. That's kind of the key early objectives. Sector scanned. Select a sector to scan. Okay, so we've just got another area scanned and I need to select another area. So I should probably... Yeah, I want to focus on this area pretty much. That's really high, so let's do there. I also want to find more of these anomalies. The sooner I can find them, the better, frankly. Let's do that area. Let's do that area. You can load up to five of these. Uh, let's do next then okay so let's go and grab some metals and whatnot lots of metals there the rovers are returning rovers return uh, right
Okay, so that is my yeah rover. I can go there, and make that. This can transport those metals to there. Okay, I'm probably gonna be making my fuel refinery in either that grid or that grid because it's not cold, not a cold area. So yeah, if I go stick in my fuel refinery, if we come to here, you can see on the right it mentions. The building will consume 60% more power in cold areas. Also, it could freeze and um, become inactive, especially during a cold wave threat. So, probably gonna have to get pipes over from this uh, water source along here. I uh, don't really want long pipes, but uh, there's not much option with this start up here. And believe it or not, this is kind of the second best starting location other than that one. So they're going to get those metals as well. Okay, so we've got the solar power up and it mentions here that I need uh, it to be con connected to a power consumer. Uh, yeah, it sort of does. It needs another building to be connected to it, but what I can use it for is just charging up my rovers, which uh, need it at time being. Um, I think I might actually need more than one though. Uh, so, let's make another one there for the time being. I'll make it a power cable there. There's concrete here. I may have accidentally put that in the way. And that may be on it as well. But uh, yeah, all of this stuff Sector is very tampered stuff. I'm not going to be keeping it there for long. Uh, right, so no resources sadly there. Uh, let's scan to there and then there next. Okay. So we get this key grid done and then I'm going to start scanning around where these other sensors are placed and hope we're finding more anomalies. Okay, my Explorer's recharging battery and I just uh, powered up my RC rover as well. I don't think I actually need that. Uh, the reason why this wasn't working earlier is because solar panels don't work in the night. So I must have tried it when it was night time. Um, yeah, I could scrap that then. Yeah, I think I will. So there's a couple of metals stored there which uh, the drones will come and get in a second. Transport has finished collecting metals down there. Still waiting on the next scan to happen. I'm going to start building some pipes to get the fuel refinery up very soon. Uh, could pretty much maybe do it now actually. Uh, oh, that transports. No, let's get that onto here. Okay. I think I'm going to wait before I start making. Uh, yeah, get that fuel refinery until this place is scanned, which is actually almost done. Sector scanned. Okay, so that's done. There's more uh, cement up here. You can see the greeny type area that can be converted into cement, basically. Right, so let's start making some stuff then proper. Let's come over to this water source so you can see. It says very low grade, that's how much water can be um, extracted at one time. So I think it's uh, three water per extractor. Uh, if we come here, uh, we can actually make a water extractor. Uh, so this is gonna, this requires concrete, which I actually don't have yet. So before I make this, I actually need to uh, yeah, get that up and running and uh, also requires power and base production is 5 but yeah I think it might be lowered because it's low grade so I have to have this within a certain radius of the water there is a trick with this though you can actually create about 9 of these all around that 
uh, if you position these uh, properly, uh, very careful with it. So I'm trying to figure out which hex is the key tile here where it's showing up on there. So I think it's, uh, I think it's that hex there. That's the key one. So I have to position them correctly around there. Right. Uh, over here, uh, I think I'm going to start on... I'm going to make my concrete here somewhere. And there's another little trick with this as well, which... Yeah, to be honest, the game could maybe do with some overlays uh, to make this show up a bit better, uh, more clearly. Uh, with the concrete extractor though, if you place this in the right uh, location though, you can have, yeah, get more of the resource. You can see the number changing on the side. Now sadly, this is all in cold, oh, mostly all in cold areas. Maybe that one wouldn't be. It may be worth my while sticking it in an area that uh, isn't cold, if I can get away with it. So, I may well do that. Now to double check, a little tip I do to double check if an area is actually concrete, you can't always tell from this greenly bit. If you select a little building, I tend to use the solar panel thing. Uh, yeah, you can see which has which of these areas has a deposit or not. So if I hold down shift, I can keep on selecting these uh, on the bits of deposits. Uh, and uh, yeah, I can move the concrete to uh, where I want it, basically, based on that. Okay, so I've taken a little time to do this. Basically, I've placed the concrete in an area of the map where it's not going to be affected by the cold, and also it will get a lot of concrete in this area. And I just use these as a guide to uh, know where the concrete is, because the visual yeah, display isn't... Uh, great uh, indicator to be honest. Uh, what I've also done with these solar panels, uh, I've turned them off so what will happen here is they're not going to be made. In fact this is a very useful way to pre-plan uh, stuff. Uh, the drones won't make anything that's been turned off basically. So yeah, uh, what I intend to do is make the power line first and then I'll turn this on and that will get made get making concrete. Once I have concrete I can start making a uh, water extractor over here and I'm gonna build some pipes up to there and get the uh, refinery made up here as well. But uh, yeah let's and pause and get going again. So these should get some metals from there. Have I discovered any more metals in the area as well? Uh, there's 14 metals there so I need to get my transport to uh, yeah get back out and uh, grab those. This is a very very precise way of doing things it's arguably a bit over the top but uh, yeah I'm min maxing like crazy uh, the plan is in this to uh, get a high score for the milestones so power line goes up let's turn that back on and they should now start to get that up and running uh, since this is going to make concrete, I'm going to want a concrete uh, depot near to it, so I'll make that near down there. Now this should be an area that isn't cold, uh, this white area. I did uh, was very careful to do that, hope that is the case, because uh, I could don't want it being costing more energy or um, freezing potentially. Okay, so the reason why that's not working now is because it's night time and solar panels don't work at night. What I could do is actually make a wind turbine. Uh, but these cost machine parts, which I can't, well, can't make at the moment. So they're pretty expensive. Also, they cost concrete, which we can't get as well yet because I haven't got that up and going. This uh, actually has an elevation boost of 74%, which is really good normally, but on that area of the map and that area of the map, I could get 100%. So early game, I don't intend to make too many of those, but I might want to get a tunnel up to here as soon as I can to make a ton of those, especially when I have machine parts. So early on, I'm probably going to be using solar 
Now there is a way I could actually store energy and that's via a power accumulator and I may well be doing that coming up uh, so I can work things at night for instance but uh, I'm going to hold off for a little bit before I make that. Okay it's now morning again and I've just finished the scanning a sector and also this has uh, come back online so that is now getting power and should start to make concrete. Might as well turn it off currently at night since it's not going to work anyway. Uh, priority is, uh, yeah, I'm going to turn it up so this will get repaired and get power before everything. This tends to be what priority does. Uh, right, so what was scanned? I'm not entirely sure. Meteorite there. Sometimes meteorites can give metals. In fact, it did. I got lucky. So uh, let's get the transport back out. Uh, let's go and grab that and bring that back to there. Okay, I actually now have six concrete, which is the exact amount I need to create the water extractor. So I could definitely start on that now. So if we come here, let's get the water extractor. If I press R, it uh, switches the direction of this. And I think it was that hex, wasn't it, there? I need, so I could put it there. Uh, this sadly is in a cold area, which is a big problem. It's going to require more power and uh, Yeah, it could freeze if I'm not careful so Gotta be a bit careful with this. I'm gonna put that there and I could uh, yeah, have a lot more around here later on if I need them so uh, Yeah at the moment what I really need to uh, figure out is where I want to have my power short term and uh, my solar panels and also that accumulator and I'm going to have to build a pipe. I think I'm going to build a pipe up here and have the fuel refinery over there but uh, I'm going to take a minute to uh, plan this out. Okay so sometime later you can see I've started planning out my infrastructure so I'm going to have uh, water pipes coming over from these Extractors only plan on making one early on because I only have the resources to make one frankly uh, And that's all I need anyway, so yeah, we'll get the water coming up here And I've been trying to figure out where I should place uh, my uh, Fuel refinery, so if I place it along here uh, It shouldn't be in cold terrain from that point on so that's probably where I'm gonna stick it so I will be making that there pretty soon and I want this near to my dome which I'm planning on sticking a, probably a couple of domes over here because I have prior knowledge of this map I know there are rare metals over here uh, so yeah domes are gonna go over here if I didn't know where uh, certain strategic resources are I'd be spending a lot more time uh, exploring areas to figure out where I want to settle first than I am uh, currently here but uh, taking advantage of uh, prior knowledge so uh, yeah fuel refinery is going to go up there uh, you don't want to make stuff too near to extractors because they produce dust and dust damages everything which requires maintenance which costs you resources so I probably don't want stuff too near to there but I'm gonna have to get uh, power lines along here as well to uh, get the energy for that I'm probably gonna have my drone hub around here that will get uh, the uh, power lines well I'll be able to make uh, if I want to have all of those extractors then I could do basically uh, I might have to stick it one further across actually if I want uh, yeah that uh, here so let's uh, place it a bit better shall we so this is very precise probably more than I need to do I may even end up moving this at some stage uh, but uh, for now yeah I guess I'll have that there okay that can be turned off I will make it eventually but uh, not quite yet first thing I need to do now here is get enough power and uh, yeah otherwise I can have issues with freezing so I'm thinking of just having uh, since I've got to have power lines come up here anyway to power those and those, I might as well just have the solar uh, along here. And long term what I want is probably having the wind turbines up here creating a tunnel up to there. 
right, so yeah, that's what I think I'm going to be doing. So let's get some power cables uh, from there to there. And yeah, I'll have all this come up here. Right. And that to there. Okay, you don't want to have really any more than necessary because uh, of maintenance issues. There are actually a couple of breakthroughs which uh, to do with pipes and cables, which hopefully we'll be lucky enough to get at some point. Um, I'm trying to figure out where I should stick my accumulators, uh, which are these uh, power storing things. I, mean, I could stick them. There's enough terrain room up here, maybe. Have them there. Uh, I don't want them too near to that because they get more dusty. But uh, yeah, we'll see. Let's uh, make some solar panels uh, in this area then. So if I hold Shift, it can you can make numerous amounts. Let's make four to start out. I think yeah, I'll put my power accumulators next to that power line in that little gap there perhaps or if there's a gap here and yeah we got the makings of a early colony with getting the oil refinery up we get the fuel uh, from that um, yeah and that's in a dry area which is important right let's get this rover which I moved up there uh, back down to here I think I've run out of metals for my transport to get locality so I need some more of these to get scanned okay right let's turn that off as well don't want that made yet yeah so get those made get this cable made I'll probably make an accumulator or two I really really gotta be careful with my resources though and then we'll start making the fuel, get the rocket launched back to Earth, and then bring back more resources. Having only one rocket it increases the difficulty significantly. So that's it for the first video. Thank you for watching. We've barely scratched the surface of what's to come, so I hope you check out the future videos. I should also let you know about some channel stuff as well. Uh, there's some links to uh, various things coming in the outro screen, which will play shortly. Uh, but if you want to check out my homepage and the playlist, there's plenty more content on the channel that I'm sure you'll be interested in. If you like strategy games, I mainly concentrate on 4X games. I've covered things such as Endless Space 2 and Stellaris. Uh, there's even RPG stuff though with Pillars of Eternity. Uh, Pillars of Eternity 2 comes out in May, so I may well do some more guides for that. Yeah, there's loads of stuff, so please go check out the playlist and the homepage if you're new to the channel. Uh, you may want to subscribe to know when future content is coming out. I plan on streaming again uh, in future. I didn't stream this, but uh, yeah, I have been streaming a lot on YouTube recently. I may even uh, switch over to Twitch at some stage, but I uh, haven't quite yet. Uh, but uh, yeah, subscribing is a great, great way to know when uh, future content is coming out. If you have any comments or questions about this Let's Play series, please use the comment section. And yeah, liking any of these videos would really help me out as well if you enjoyed them. So thank you if you do do that or even share the videos. If you want to really support the channel, make sure uh, that there will be future content coming out. Uh, one way is to become a Patreon of mine. Uh, there's a link in the outro video for that. But uh, yeah, that's it at this stage. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.